Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Fingers crossed. I think I might have actually figured out some of this uh, video editing stuff. So if you're seeing me in a um, normal orientation, yay! If not, I might post this anyway, so we're gonna see what happens. But just wanted to say thank you for sticking with me through all of the hiccups and um, yeah, thanks a lot. So in today's video, I wanna go over some stencil and masking techniques and uh, I'm going to talk about the difference between those and talk about all of the different opportunities that that technique will bring. I'll be right back. Good morning, everybody. Here we are today, and we are going to work on some stencils and masks. I don't have the camera set up so that you can see everything on my table, but we've got some letter stencils and number stencils some hand cut stencils that I made just using an old magazine page. I have some store-bought stencils, which I don't use a lot, but occasionally they do find a place in my work. And this, which is a hand cut stencil that I made. So first of all, the difference between stencils and masks is that a mask will mask an area. So if you put a color down on the plate, anything you cover up obviously is going to remain that cover so that when you bring your pickup sheet over top of it, it's going to pick up all of the paint around it, leaving the paint underneath where the mask was. A stencil, and I know this is really basic stuff, I just thought I'd go over it. A stencil is going to print anything in the negative space of the cutouts and I mean we've been using these since we were like toddlers so I think everybody kind of has a basic understanding of what we're working with today but you can do a lot of really interesting things and I have some cool techniques to show you so let's get started first thing I'm going to do is choose a color to start with and I think we're going to go with this really pretty fluorescent pink that I just bought yesterday from Liquitex um, yeah let's use this big plate I'm mostly choosing this color because I was printing last night and there's still some on the plate and I didn't really feel like cleaning the plate, so there you go. But let's get this spread out a little bit here. And it's not a very opaque color, but it's really pretty. And I'm gonna just start randomly laying down some of these stencils. You can make them go off the page, which is always interesting compositionally. And I'm gonna lay down a few masks too. And again, there's no real rhyme or reason to anything. Um, these are actually, these ones here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. These are just masks that I made out of a uh, piece of, um, what is that stuff called? The overhead projector plastic stuff that I picked up for a couple bucks at uh, a thrift store near my house. Okay. I don't want to wait too long because that paint is going to dry. And let's see how much of this is going to actually pick up. Okay. So this print is nothing that I'm planning on keeping. I'm probably just gonna keep using this sheet as a uh, pull-off sheet for the rest of the time. Let's go ahead and carefully remove the stencils. I did wait a little too long, so we're not gonna get very crisp corners, but actually, I'm gonna show you something that you can do here. I don't know that I've showed you this in other videos. So we got some, whoops, that one ripped. We got some interesting shapes on here. Um, one thing I did wanna mention, making your own masks and stencils, you can use any scrap paper or anything laying around the house. Uh, the thinner the paper, obviously, you're probably only going to get one pool out of it, but if you wanted to keep get something a little more permanent, you could use a cardstock or the plastic like I just showed you. Um, I do think I actually did show you this in my last video, but I have these baby wipes here, and for anything that you don't want 
that's remaining on the plate, you can just go in and like kind of clean it up a little bit. You can also use painter's tape for that. It will pull up anything that you might not want that's still on the plate. Um, I'm really not bothered by this stuff because I like the imperfections. I will do that. So I'm just gonna go with that. So we've got this layer here. Um, I think next what I'm gonna show you is, we're gonna go over top of that with one of these store-bought stencils. So when I use one of these, there are a couple of different ways to do this. You can use a little spouncer sponge. Um, I mean, you could really use anything if this, these are nice, these are plastic, so they really adhere to the stickiness of the plate pretty well. You could even like paint over it with a paintbrush. You could dab it on with a paper towel. You can use the brayer. Um, the one thing I do want to mention about that though is I don't like to cover the whole stencil because then it's pretty obvious that it is a square that is, um, you know, pre manufactured. So I'm going to actually just take a little of this Payne's Gray and set it off to the side here. I'm going to take my smaller brayer and get it loaded up and just kind of here and there. So that you can't exactly tell that this was a square to begin with just in a few places here to add a little bit of interest. That looks pretty cool. And without, and you can see without reloading the brayer with paint, I'm getting different um, values of the color too. Of course, the first pass is pretty dark. And then as I use up the paint on the brayer, it gets lighter and lighter. So we're gonna give this a second to dry. And while we do that, I mean, I'm kind of just showing you some techniques here. This is definitely not a piece that I would, um, you know, seek out to make as a finished piece. I just want to kind of cram as much as I can into one. So that's why uh, we're kind of going over top. Now you can do anything with these. Uh, I do have, let's see, what do I want to use next? Maybe I'll go in with this stencil that I made. This is Yupo paper, which is just basically a thin sheet of plastic. Um, it's a little pricey. It's meant for things like alcohol inks or watercolors because it is a non-porous surface. It's not going to absorb anything that you put on it. I just happened to have some laying around and I thought it would make a great stencil and it did. And I just used an X-Acto knife to cut out all these little shapes because I wanted a stencil shaped like this, but I thought, why buy one when I can make it myself? which sounds stingy, but I'm just poor. So I'm sure y'all can relate. Let's go ahead and, so I've got the pink and I've got the uh, Payne's Gray on there. What do we wanna put with that? How about, oh, I don't know. Let's see, I bought this, I bought this neon orange yesterday and I haven't used it yet. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna, Kind of lay this down wherever. And squeeze a little bit of that out. Get some on my brayer here. It's a little thinner in consistency. It's probably hard to tell, but you can see just the shine and the, the bumps that it leaves. It's not a very smooth paint just because it's a little thinner. Oh, see that picked up uh, some of the black which laid down there and I kind of like that. I didn't intend for it to happen, but I like these little mistakes that kind of work out. I think what happened was I actually mixed some orange and black together, but that's pretty neat. So let's go with it. And I'm gonna need to let this dry for a little bit. So I'm gonna, be right back. 
Okay, that orange really didn't want to dry, so I actually just took it and hit it with my um, hair dryer on the cool setting for a minute or two, and now it's dry enough to add another layer of paint to. And I think we're just going to pick this up with something simple like um, just my white here. So we can, we should really be able to see all of the details against the white. So get my big brayer here. It doesn't look like the colors are mixing, so that's good. I'm really trying to work this up into the corners because I have a lot of extra paint up there that I don't necessarily, I mean, it's fine. It'll just pull up on a print somewhere and I'm sure it'll look cool, but I don't necessarily want it there. This would all be uh, avoided if I would just properly clean the plate after I use it, but I think it's more interesting to kind of just see what you end up with. I'm gonna print this just on a piece of uh, regular copy paper here, just to see what we get. We'll leave this on here for a minute or two. And um, the next technique I'm gonna show you is pretty cool. It's using rubber bands and they create some really cool shapes that you wouldn't necessarily get any other way. Um, but I'll show you that in a second. All right. Oops. Okay. So you see how my paper is ripping here? That's what happens when you leave it on too long. I usually don't have that problem because I'm impatient and I honestly usually don't leave it on long enough, but that's what happens, so just be aware. So this is the, um, this is the print that we got. I'm gonna bring you down here and show you the details because something cool happened, which I thought might and I wasn't sure. So I used magazine pieces for uh, some of the stencils and masks and you can see it picked up the, it transferred the image of some of the text on the, from the magazine strip. I wasn't sure that was going to work because what I used was the cover page and typically I don't have a lot of luck with that printing, but it did that time. So I think it's kind of cool the way that looks. Take you back out here. But you can see how everything kind of came together with all of the different patterns. Again, obviously this is not anything I'm going to, you know, necessarily seek out, but these make really cool collage paper, so I am going to keep this because a couple videos from now, I am gonna show you some really cool collage work that I think you're gonna like, so stick around for that. But for right now, I'm going to try to um, get the paper cleaned off of this plate here and it'll just peel right off. This is actually still paint on here. So I'll just leave that there and it'll pull up eventually. Um, actually, it's peeling off right now, so we'll just do that real quick. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is printing with rubber bands. Slide that up here. So we're gonna just choose a color and I think I'm gonna go I am gonna go with this Prussian blue. Get some of that down. It's such a pretty color. And I really like to print this with a, a bright yellow. I just think the two work really well together. Now I have a lot of paint on there, so I'm actually going to, instead of wasting it, on a piece of paper. I do have this little guy here, so we might as well make two at one time. Cause you know, why not? I can actually even show you two techniques at one time, possibly here, which I think I'm gonna do. So first of all, there is no scientific method to this. Grab them and just kind of lay them down and see what you can get. And um, I'm going to go in with this 
here. And I have another one just laying somewhere, but of course I can't find it right now. So we're just gonna go with the X and, oh, here it is. And you can use these in combination. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a pull off sheet. Now these are mounted up pretty good. So you really wanna work the paper in to all the little crevices that the rubber bands are making. that I don't want on there. And that's perfect. And that's a pretty cool thing there. Now I'm going to also take a sheet over here and pick up this paint before it dries too much. And you've got so I did this to show you. You've got a print here and you're going to get a print there. Letters and numbers print backwards. So, and if you can't remember that, if you flip the plate over, sorry about the fire whistle, of course that was gonna happen right now. But if you flip the plate over, you're gonna see the print that you're going to get. So, the X doesn't matter, the six does. I don't care because we're doing this for demonstration purposes and sometimes I like the pattern more so than the actual number. And we're gonna take those stencils off and we're left with that pattern. And now we can remove the rubber bands as well, carefully. Incidentally, this process, you will get paint all over your hands, so just be prepared for that. You can wear gloves. I don't like to. I find them to be a hindrance because I like to really be able to like know what I'm doing, be hands-on, but um, you can do it if you don't like to get paint on your hands, but trust me, it will happen otherwise. So I'm going to go over and put these in the sink. I'm mostly doing that to keep them away from my cat because he will eat rubber bands and he is like a um, ninja and he will just run with them and then I'll find him hiding under something chewing. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we've got these basic prints down here and that one still needs a second, but this one's pretty dry. So what else do we want to do with this? I think we're going to use this star pattern stencil and I really like to use this copper with that. So what I'm going to do is actually put a little bit on a towel, kind of mush it in and just work that in like that. And this is going to be very subtle, which is exactly what I want. And I don't want them all over the place. I just want a few to show up here and there. Maybe a couple over here and a few down there. I think we're good on that. Now we'll let this one dry. Bring this back into the frame and I have some unnamed yellow. No, oh, cadmium yellow. I thought that was a cadmium. And I'm going to pick this print up with that. Oh, that's a lot of paint. Okay. I'm gonna pick this up on a piece of tissue paper. Thank you. 
pretty good. Set my tissue paper down there. And again, I like to use the tissue paper um, if I'm planning on collaging because it really blends into the background of whatever I'm doing. So sometimes with collage, it's okay and you don't mind seeing the edges of the pieces of paper. Sometimes that's what you actually want. But other times you just really wanna get the image transferred over and this is a good paper to use for that because it'll kind of just melt into the background. Okay. No, this isn't ready to pick up yet. All right, let's let that sit there for a second and I'll try not to let it sit so long that it rips again, but hey, who knows? We'll find out. So what do I wanna do with these letters? I think I'm gonna, oh, I know, I'm gonna pick them up with, I'm gonna pick them up with some of this permanent rose. Not sure if I waited long enough, but if I didn't, that's okay. I'll just make sure all this gray is off of there. Again, these are going to print backwards because I laid them down facing me, which is not what you want to do. But this is just for demo purposes. Let's see what this guy's doing over here. Just a good bit of paint on this. This one might not work. Oh, it's coming from this side. It's not. Why are you not printing? Okay, I'm gonna try something else here. Let's go in with, I still have some yellow on this brayer. lay down some more yellow. I think the problem was I had too much paint on there. I grabbed this with a sheet of copy paper. Yeah, this is definitely better. Oh yeah, okay, this worked beautifully. So you can see the print that we've got here. I just love the combination of the Prussian blue and the cadmium yellow together. I'm gonna to bring you down so you can really see the details of this. It's just a really neat contrast. And you can kind of, I'm sure, imagine the possibilities of using a technique like that. I mean, you could make an entire piece with this as a starting point. These would make interesting collage pieces. I, can see, I could see this you know, ripped up on a piece of board along with some other things. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go back over to this guy here. I'm gonna see if this pulled up. Yes. That worked really cool. So let's bring it down. I think you can see some of this, the gold stars that came through from the stencil. You can clearly see the number and the letter. And honestly, if you were collaging with this, you could flip it over if you wanted the orientation to be in the correct way. And it's thin enough that once it gets wet with the, um, the medium that you're using to glue it down, that's gonna come through even more so than right there, which you can already see. But I like it this way. I like the colors, I like the way it turned out. I think this will look cool as a piece of collage work. So we've got these. This was the pickup sheet, which you could absolutely use. You could continue with this, print more on top of it, use it as it is, 
The same way with this sheet from the rubber bands. I mean, you can definitely continue with that and print on top of it. And then the mask and stencil sheet that we used before. So there are a whole lot of different options with these techniques, and these are just a few. I actually have a really cool one that I'm gonna show you in the next video. I just learned this one the other day and I thought it was really neat and I think you'll really enjoy it. So please stop back and check us out next time. Have a great day.